Yes, hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, I wish to welcome you all to follow my, my speech. And uh, first of all, of course, I wish to thank you all, Asil, thank you very much for your uh, opening words. I wish to address special thanks to Tikkurila Company, Finnish nice, important company. It's uh, every time important that there are uh, uh, supporters and uh, sponsors uh, just uh, confirming everything is going well in, uh, in the events like this. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a large buildings uh, where we have uh, used uh, uh, Tikkurila's products, but I promise to, to show one, one project which is painted by your, your products. Thank you. Um, I, um, I, bit, I apologize the quality of, uh, of uh, slides. Uh, I think it depends on uh, uh, the resolution of uh, the projector. I don't know what is the reason, but uh, I'm not really, really, fine, really fine with that. But I hope, uh, hope however, that you can follow my, my thoughts and uh, my, my speech. Um, Yes, um, if I tell um, with very, very few words first about my background. Uh, so um, I am, uh, first of all, a practicing architect uh, from Lahdelma and Mahlamäki Architects. Um, I have one co-founder, co Ilmari Lahdelma. We have worked together since uh, mid of uh, 80s already uh, under different uh, companies' names, um, and since uh, 1997 uh, until under, under Lahdelma and Mahlamäki Architects. Since 1997, I have uh, answered for uh, the Oulu University, the Northernmore School of Architecture is there, and uh, I have been uh, uh, the head and uh, the dean of uh, the faculty also several times. Uh, today, I'm a uh, I am withdrawing from the university, not yet retiring, but withdrawing because of my, my uh, other uh, business and uh, my, my, my practice. And uh, also I see that uh, I'm beginning to be too old to act as a professor already. So I wish to give a bit space for younger, younger colleagues. My history and our office history is based very, very strongly on uh, the architectural competitions. Here is uh, one exhibition and one gallery uh, telling uh, uh, about the process we have uh, received uh, just uh, winning first the competition. And this is very, very Finnish way, we, how we work uh, and how we, how we have worked uh, since uh, the beginning of the last century. Almost all of our most important public buildings, but today also many housing quarters, for instance, have been based on uh, on the competitions, and still we prefer open competitions. So everyone, everybody can participate in the competition. Although you are a student of architecture, you have a right to win the competition, and you have the right to get the commission too. And if you happen to win and you, you, are, you are not uh, experienced enough, then you have to find a bit uh, more experienced colleague who is taking care of uh, some uh, practical responsibilities and. Uh, uh, who has uh, a license to run, run the office. So uh, uh, to read Finnish architecture is uh, also uh, the history of, of uh, our competition system. And uh, it, it has worked really well. I was, I was uh, 20, uh, yeah, something like between 25 or 30 when I was my very first competition, uh, 18. Uh, in 1986 already, and uh, that was uh, uh, the start of my, my, my professional life. I was, uh, and my, my colleagues, we were students of architecture of that time, but no problem, we received the commission too. <laughs> so uh, I, will, uh, I will speak about uh, several issues uh, tonight. Uh, one is uh, one is uh, the meaning how important it is to uh, observe our environment. There is a nice picture from, uh, from Finland, from uh, Finnish nature, describing uh, our environment, our natural environment, and uh, it is totally clear that uh, many of our artists, composers, uh, we architects, we are getting uh, inspirations from our nature. 
it sounds a bit of us. Oh, sorry, I am working with this one, sorry. Yeah, good note. Agile, thank you very much. It's good that there is a person who is following my speech, at least one. Yeah, that was, that was the comp... And you know, uh, the laser, then you have to do it in the Yes, okay, so inspiration. So yeah, well, I, I was saying that it sounds uh, a phrase a bit, uh, but uh, I think uh, it's very, very valid argument still if we think architecture. Please observe also your environment here in the city it's not needed to travel to uh, Italy to see Renaissance architecture. Of course, we have to civilize ourselves, but it's not needed to make good quality of architecture, although you don't travel. Please conserve, observe your, your environment. And the next one, please. Yeah, um, today, um, well, let's say uh, we are talking about teamwork in, uh, in, 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 in the connection of how we architects work. Of course, we are working uh, uh, together with uh, several uh, subcontractors, uh, construction companies, uh, with our users, uh, uh, etc. But uh, the obvious work is a lot teamwork. Um, we have quite a uh, number of young people, but we have also better, better maturated architects. Uh, today, about 40, 40 people working together, close to 10 of them uh, are uh, are abroad, so uh, Finland is also getting more and more force from abroad, and this is important to get uh, also opinions which are not known in Finland. Pedro, for instance, is finalizing one of our models here, but uh, getting also time to time uh, some rowings to, to, to work. Yeah, I'm your yeah, next one, please. I am afraid that, yes, this is, this is, oh, shit, yeah, I have to, we are getting probably, or you are getting a translation in, in Russia. So, but the, the, this sentence, it, it, it tells about the materiality structure, authenticity, how important this is uh, to me and to, to our office. Uh, so uh, that how we have to consider a kind of haptic architecture. We want to touch, for instance, a carved log wall, and at the same time, we are able to see how the house is built. And this dimension is missing from the built environment today. We don't know what is behind the building, what we can see, what is behind the facade, etc. We are using more and more synthetic materials. We, don't, we can't recognize the real materiality of uh, our our buildings. And uh, in a way, a certain touchable architecture is very, very close to me. This is a kind of uh, small uh, uh, pilot process, so a small um, summer cabin of uh, our, our, our family, and uh, more or less 50 percently I have been built uh, this myself. No, okay, Maria is here, you can say that maybe 20 percently, but however. <laughs> So, and uh, it tells also how uh, small space can provide a lot. This is our, here we can uh, spend our laser. On the background, there is, uh, there is our pet, then we have a small library, as you can see, the bookshelf with some interesting books. Then we have a, a desk for dining and uh, for laser. It's like a bit uh, like, uh, Corbusier's, uh, following Corbusier's, like Corbusier's patterns of uh, different zones, how we should zone our living. And uh, that is important to architects very, very much so that we understand really by our hands, we have thinking hands, we architects, we all people, and that is, that is important that we utilize this, uh, uh, this, uh, this possibility still. Um, yeah, there, was, uh, there is a book uh, by us that name is The Concentrated uh, Imagination. Uh, 
So I'm talking here about how uh, our task is not only to solve problems, but uh, to transfer and mold his, in this case, or our vision into something which can be experienced and how we experience really architecture. This is, however, most important. We can speak and I can speak about technical uh, possibilities in the future, but uh, however, we have to remember that the emotional, the emotional experience, however, is every time the most important. Next, next one, please. It works well now, thanks. Um, my way to work is uh, to work by hands. I can't uh, use computers, not at all. I do not diminish the meaning of computers. Uh, digital technology provides a lot of capacity. We don't know not yet what is going on after 30 years. And I think that digitalization will help us and just uh, that the people can understand our visions in time enough but still, I think uh, this is uh, one way and one thing we cannot forget. We have to, we have to use pens. I can't think without a pen. This is my way to think. This is my way to write, my way uh, uh, to create speeches or, and also uh, when I am, I am uh, thinking what and how to make some detail, I, I, every time I need a pen. Um, yeah, this was exemplary way, one, one work completed, and the next one, please, and the next one. Uh, we uh, had actually very, very, and the next one, please, Russ, with this project, our client, uh, uh, the uh, university in Helsinki, not Helsinki University, but uh, 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 Metropolitan, it's a special name for that university. Uh, our task was to make and to manage this project and in, uh, in, in very, very short time, just uh, in, in three, four years only, uh, we succeed with that. And uh, also in this connection, our, I think our client wouldn't be fine if we had make a certain standard building. Uh, but However, we found that it's important to provide a special character so that especially this university building is known as Metropolia University. And uh, in that sense, identity is every time, the next one please, is every time very, very important uh, aim in, uh, in architecture. Identity is the, the word, we are speaking about that a lot, but uh, however, I feel that uh, very seldom, however, we meet uh, buildings which really have its identity. In Finland, this has its identity, maybe, maybe not in France or in German, but in, in our country. Yeah, the facade system is, uh, is, is uh, making, uh, was made such a way that uh, the scale of this building is not readable. The height from the ground till top is close to 50 meters, but the scale seems to be smaller because you can't consider rows of windows. And this is one, one, one uh, uh, research how to manage scale in architecture. And this is especially for Tikburila. We have colors. Time to time we prefer colors. I'm fine with materials. My business partner, Ilmari, prefer more, more, uh, more colors. Uh, I'm fine with, uh, with, let's say, natural materials more. <laughs> but, but uh, however, there are, and also this, uh, the next one, the, uh, the interior, there are actually four buildings, and all of them have a, a bit uh, similar Main, main, runs, main entrance lobby. And uh, here is also, uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, trick how to manipulate the scale of the building because uh, all of those ceilings, suspended ceilings, uh, uh, they have the same material and same division, but uh, it's uh, quite interesting to, to, to read which floor is really which floor, but uh, that's, that, that, was, that is also a kind of uh, effect to manipulate the scale of the building. 
Yes, at, at the beginning there was uh, two slides of uh, our summer cottage. Here there are uh, um, description of uh, uh, Helsinki High Rise project that is the biggest one and uh, the biggest project in Finland today. Uh, we happen to want a competition together with YAT company, the biggest Finnish construction company. Uh, today uh, we are working with that. Um, I wish to say some words about that because uh, urbanism is one uh, umbrella of this seminar and this conference. Um, I apologized yesterday a bit when I gave my first lecture uh, uh, of, of the Finnish architecture in general that uh, we Finns, we have achieved normally our best examples from uh, the beginning of the modern era, working not in the cities but in the forests or time to time also uh, nowhere. It's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> It's quite interesting history in that sense, the history of Finnish architecture. But this Trigoni house uh, yeah, it has several nicknames already because uh, it's, uh, the shape is based, uh, the footprint is based uh, every single building being a triangle and uh, not really very often used uh, model for a higher or high rise buildings. It's very demanding in terms of numbers, but uh, visually, it is, visually it is very interesting because you understand how the behavior, behavior of the triangle works. You can see at once only one, uh, one side. That means that uh, the effect is also totally different. It looks to be much, much more uh, uh, slimmer than many, many high scribers normally. Yes, this is a com composition of uh, Toplerone, Toplerone, so that is the nick nickname. Today, and the highest one, the tallest uh, tower, its uh, proportions are exactly the same when, when if, you, if you buy a Toplerone from the airport, uh, from tax free, the middle size, so you can compare them this uh, Size and it has been also easy, it has been a joke that we have some Toplerones and we can cut piece by piece and to see also how, how it works then when uh, we have eaten some, some pieces of that. But uh, more seriously, um, this is out from the city center of Helsinki. Helsinki is protected absolutely. We wish to maintain our profile, our skyline, our historical skyline. We have a, a certain big scale master plan where uh, higher buildings are allowed to build. And this is one. And uh, now, uh, more than 10 years ago, this uh, work actually started. <coughs> and now I, I need your, yeah. I have to show you, okay. Yes, here is the tower area. And the whole environment was built already. Just recently there was, uh, 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 this uh, shopping center, hotel, etc., completed, and this is the final phase of, uh, of this big scale project to finalize the whole area. We are speaking about the second city of Helsinki. It's it's very hard crossing point of different types of traffic. So trains in the future, metro, buses, more than 200,000 people will across the area in the future. And uh, this is supported strongly by all the parties, all the political parties by Helsinki. Also, I would like to say Green Party because uh, from uh, the point of view of long lasting sustainability, this is excellent project we trust on this because we will save inertia. We don't need any more private car traffic so much. The people can find uh, all the services on one area, et etc. Et etc. This is behind this, uh, this process. The main rail, um, rail track uh, is uh, from uh, south to north is uh, passing by the area. Now I, I try, oh, sorry. Now I give it back because it works better than, than, uh, than now. So uh, 
yes, here we, we can see the silhouette of, uh, of uh, the, the composition of the ho houses. So all of them have uh, their, its, its own height. This is, uh, this is important. So that we don't have a kind of uh, flat or straight line of, uh, of eaves, but uh, different, different heights in every, every single building. You know, maybe uh, in Finland, we have one of our brands is Marimekko, textile uh, manufacturer Marimekko. Very, very nice dressings I can't see now here, but uh, in Finland, Finnish and Scandinavian ladies wear very, very often Marimekko dressing, okay? And they have used very, very similar, uh, similar uh, uh, patterns in their textiles. I know Aaltos, uh, uh, one very famous curtain model, has exactly the same texture we have used now here in the facades. And uh, so in that sense, this, what I wish to say is that I wish to underline a certain Finnish modesty simplicity in our architecture, although, uh, although uh, maybe this kind of raster system is, is known, but however, it's a part of, uh, of this, uh, this complex. Towers with public podium, the next one, please. It's, yeah, this one. Uh, it's, it's important that uh, the area like this is protected against winds, rains, etc. Although we have uh, number of high-rise buildings here. The highest one, the tallest one, is close to 200 meters. This is the tallest one in, never built before in Finland. There is a special area for the pedestrian, a peaceful area for the pedestrian. So lower structures protecting uh, uh, noise, et cetera, or against noise, etc and also open spaces for, uh, for shops, cafeterias, restaurants. Uh, so uh, this is very, very often missing on the areas like this. In, for instance, if to visit in London or in many, many other bigger cities, you will meet the same problem. These quarters are very, very often windy, but uh, if, if to manage the lower part of, of the complex, you can, uh, you can uh, mitigate all of those effects very, very strongly and to create a comfortable in environment to work. In the north, in Oulu, which is my university city, and uh, this is, uh, let's say, the northern city of Finland. Uh, uh, it is said that it is uh, the nor northern capital of Scandinavia. It's, it's partially right because uh, uh, economic, economically very, uh, very rich city still and a very uh, active city. And uh, the problem is that there is a, the next one, please, if you take the next one. Next slide, please. Yep, this one, yeah. There is again the track, rail track uh, from Helsinki to Oulu and to the northern part of, uh, of Finland. And this track is dividing the city into two. And uh, also here, the idea has been to uh, provide for uh, the passengers new, uh, new station. But uh, the economic reasons, it's not possible anymore today to put public money only for, for the station. But to find uh, private investors private construction companies and to extend these activities. So beside the station where you can buy tickets, by the, today almost all use computers, but however, there is a ticketing. We will, uh, uh, we will um, uh, provide commercial activities. There are uh, spaces for, for laser. There is small uh, uh, auditorium uh, for sport etc. There are new housing quarters, etc. So very much multifix, multifunctional complex following the line of the road. And also a uh, new passenger way for the passenger so they can uh, walk and bike also underneath of the whole complex. If you take again 
back the slide, one slide back, please. Yes, this one. So here you can see the image from uh, the other side of the city and the people can walk down and, and, and find, uh, find different surfaces downstairs. Uh, the, the, the tallest part of this complex uh, co uh, will contain the hotel service and uh, otherwise this uh, lobby is uh, a kind of traditional railway, railway stations lobby as we know. In Oulu, the next one please. Uh, the city was known, its history roots are uh, uh, back till, uh, let's say, mid middle age, something like that, till uh, 1600s, 1700s. And uh, it is known of its tar production. So uh, tar barrels transported from uh, the forestry and northern areas to Oulu. Tar was our most important uh, product to export till uh, 1850, something like that. After that, then, uh, 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 let's say, uh, industry compensated this, but uh, until this, uh, tar was uh, the most important product uh, in, in, in Finland to export. And when we have Tar producers are, and tar manufacturing, of course, to find an idea for the process, why not, to make tar barrel. And uh, now the name of this uh, campus will be tar barrels. That was, uh, we have to, I, or it's not needed, absolutely needed. But it's good if you find, or if we find uh, a certain uh, <clears throat> connect with the old history. You know, it's much more easier to explain the process also to the users, to our clients, to our investors. They are complaining maybe that you architects, you are, uh, you are making crazy ideas. That's why, why to create such uh, empty space uh, with air only or nothing, or wh why you are making good walls for, uh, for the hotel rooms. Yes, there are this kind of critics is valid, but when you can say, no, this is now Oulu's new tar barrel and bringing totally new brand, being the part of the futures of Oulu, they can accept that absolutely. This is a good, good way to, to, to manage also clients and also a bit, uh, uh, bit uh, also uh, general critics. And the next one, another side of this uh, campus is is if you take the next one. Yeah, it works now, yeah. Okay, so uh, many projects going on today in Finland uh, which uh, have one similar feature, the same feature is that uh, old railway stations and the areas of them are under revitalization. And the reason why is that uh, around them there are wide areas without use today and also track areas and track rails very very tracks rails that they very very often they divide cities into two this is the the problem the next tema so i read here we finns we uh, do we have still mythical relationship with nature professor johani pallasma once said that us finns we have a unique geometry of the forest when speaking about Finnish architecture. Yeah, it's a phrase, a meat, but uh, in my opinion, it is a kind of resource still today. The next one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, some, uh, some paintings. Uh, we had so-called golden age of art uh, just beginning uh, of the last century or uh, uh, late uh, 20th century and the nature was uh, what our painters described at that time. Uh, in this connection I wish to uh, say some words about, uh, about this work that is the Finnish Forest Museum Lusto. This was uh, the competition winning entry 
beginning of 90s, actually, uh, these sketches or the process was created close to 30 years ago. Uh, ago. And uh, it is an example how often we think we have received commission or option to make the design where the Finnish nature really is a part. The building is uh, surround, surrounding by pine forest and uh, not far away from that side there is not, uh, there is uh, also nice lake view. <coughs> geometry is very important uh, and plan geometry is very important uh, in, in architecture. So uh, I, can't, uh, I can't see any differences uh, uh, between uh, the floor plan and the facade when we are uh, just thinking uh, different uh, proportions and uh, uh, relationships between uh, different architectural components and uh, vital geometry used. Next. Yes, please. Okay, the next one. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, forest museo. This is uh, yeah, the, the description visualization of, uh, of the building. <coughs> A certain randomly made uh, composition with different uh, lines of uh, different components of, uh, of the building. So uh, it provides a lot because we can think also the building is in a way alone in the middle of the forest, but with the help of those uh, random, randomly settled uh, building parts, we can create also exteriors and peaceful exteriors which are giving also for the visitors uh, in a way a kind of uh, uh, spiritual shelter, at least not maybe against rain, but uh, you feel that you are somewhere and you can also extend the effect of your, your buildings. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, now I need this. Yeah, so, uh, no, there is no, yeah, here. The entrance actually happens from here. It is a kind of prolonged entrance. Picketing is here. You walk throughout the whole building before and going downstairs before you reach then finally the exhibition area. So in a way uh, we can use and utilize uh, the same patterns and ideas we can use and we are uh, working uh, on the level of urbanism. We should uh, consider every time outdoor yards and outdoor spaces, they, they are as important as interiors in a public building and uh, normally every time in our public buildings we have used the same, same system, same tactics. Okay, the next one please. And here are some, uh, uh, some, some fixtures of, uh, of the exteriors, as well as the interior. The next one, please. I think here we can image a kind of atmosphere of a forest. Yes, of course, because uh, you can circulate freely in between different components, between different uh, exhibition uh, uh, artifacts and, uh, and, and objects. And uh, we created a certain type of uh, forestry and atmosphere and image also here in the interiors. The building was strongly criticized by our, <coughs> our by some, uh, some, some Finnish, by some politicians as well after it was completed because the frame of this building was made in concrete. Uh, why to me crazy architects, they are providing us uh, the forest museum that is made with concrete. And that was, uh, critics was valid, but uh, at that time, beginning of 90s, it was not possible to use wood, not at all, in, in public buildings. We had a hard job to get uh, some uh, facades and uh, some interiors to, 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 to make uh, using uh, wooden panels and wooden materials. But this was a kind of uh, very first uh, after war building in Finland, made public building where 
so much wood has been used. So that was uh, a kind of beginning of the period which is continuing still today. We will see and found in Finland today number of wooden public buildings. And uh, after this building, actually, we started wide process led by the Ministry uh, of Environment, Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Forest, some uh, institutions, some universities uh, to uh, renew totally our fire protection uh, rules and uh, the whole building code in that sense that we, uh, we got rights uh, for wooden industry to have equal position to use with, with uh, concrete and, and, and steel. Okay, <clears throat> Finnish Folk Art Center is it's, it's also it's a kind of uh, sister for the previous work. And uh, the competition was held 1990 already. Uh, the area itself is a flat area on the western part of Finland. Uh, there, on the site, on the competition site, there happened to be uh, one hill, it's not mountain, but quite a steep hill. And uh, uh, also uh, the program of this building was quite wide, something like uh, 4,000 square meters. My very first question was how to uh, harmonize and uh, how to adapt the mass, so wide mass and program onto its side because the village itself is very, very small uh, village with small wooden houses, very small scale buildings, and this kind of public building very, very often is, 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 is comic phenomena in the environment like this. And how, how to smelt, how to adapt this architecture being the part of the existing environment. Existing environment is something we can't never, we can't pass by, we have to consider it very, very carefully. In this case, the solution was that uh, uh, the central most important spaces and facilities, they are hidden embedded into rock and underneath of the rocky, rocky surface. And in between those uh, two wings, <clears throat> there is the pedestrian for the people so they can walk from, <coughs> from the village onto the top of, uh, of the hill. And uh, the scale is now in, in a better, better harmony with, uh, with the older, older buildings of the city. It was nominated by the editor of uh, uh, Architectural Review, the English uh, uh, Architectural Magazine, so Finnish Acropolis, so that uh, there are some similarities between uh, Athene uh, Acropolis and this, uh, this process. Yes, that's true, because it allowed people to walk, uh, uh, to use uh, a kind of ceremonial part that runs between the building and above the building. And, uh, this was, uh, it was actually a big honor to read this, this, this uh, statement or, or, or argument. And here we can now understand the village is on the background. There is uh, the tower of the church and otherwise uh, cables of some wooden buildings and then this new building where you can also enjoy the environment. And this is also one what I have seen during my, my uh, professional career, we have to remember that when we are making some new buildings or new building that uh, is a kind of uh, uh, to the environment. We can provide totally new views, like here to this old village, for instance. The people normally do not consider this, but uh, when they are sitting in the cafeteria or when they are sitting here uh, on those steps, uh, they can consider the old village, which is, uh, uh, <coughs> which is then uh, there on the background. And the uh, lobby areas with some skylights, light is every time important. We have to bring 
every time skylight into interiors uh, if we wish to guide people to find the most important, the essential facilities of the building and the big auditorium with 400 seats. It's like a cave in, uh, in, uh, in inside the rock and uh, very, very light, uh, a kind of uh, uh, suspended ceiling uh, for uh, some uh, mechanical structures and uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for technical. Otherwise, only uh, natural stone and wood, and this creates the illusion or the effect of, uh, of architecture, finally. History is interesting, we can learn in this building, uh, uh, I found that uh, some, uh, uh, some measures of the facades were very, very close to golden section. Why not to use this old golden section? It doesn't make architecture better, I think so, but it is one way to manage certain uh, big scale process so that we have agreed some module system or some measure system, it is easier to put things into the rhythm. And although massing was done uh, randomly, there is a very specific and uh, uh, details and some measures in very, very exact discipline. So di di discipline and, uh, and made and randomly made, that was important here. <laughs> Haltia is the name for, uh, for the work, which is uh, the Finnish na nature center and uh, uh, not far away from Helsinki, from our capital. And uh, this was the work we started uh, uh, 2009, 2008, something like that. And uh, so it's quite new and completed 13, 14. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> this is an interesting example how uh, time to time we architects, we uh, can get also very simple guidelines from our, our clients, from our, our users. And uh, the program we actually uh, built, structured it together with, uh, constructed together with our client and with the Ministry of, uh, of Agriculture. Uh, that was uh, the founder of, uh, of, the, of the project. So actually all the funds came from, uh, from the Ministry. And uh, we set and wrote up the main aim clearly enough at the beginning of the project so that this building will be built using only wooden materials, wooden structures, wooden surfaces, everything, and that geothermal heating system, cooling system is to be taken into use in this, this project. <coughs> and that was quite interesting because it was now very first time in Finland when uh, we intended first time to make uh, uh, a uh, public building using only wooden materials and especially uh, prefabricated wooden components. And that, was, that is the background, the story for this project. The nature center itself, is, uh, its task is to tell uh, not the history of our nature, but uh, being and working as an information center, as a learning center, for the visitors, for the school kids, telling what is important in our nature, why nature and the forest has been so important to us, to Finns, and how and where to find the highlights of our nature, how to travel there, etc., etc. Et the next one, next one, please. Okay, here is one winter slide. I took it because. Uh, Wishing to tell that also in Finland we have snow, not only here, but we have all, only also snow, not yet, but it's, it's, it's coming. <coughs> if you take uh, the, the, previo, the previous one, one slide, I can... 
Yeah. Yeah. The previous one, once again. Yeah, this one, okay. Yeah, that was one, it's a sidewalk in this story, but I wish to tell you because uh, this building was relatively costly. Uh, depends on uh, new techniques we used. And partially that we had to transport some uh, wooden components from abroad from Austria. Although we are constructing building in Finland, but there are no uh, companies enough uh, being able to uh, manage uh, wooden elements, etc. Today there are a number of companies like that, but uh, 2007, no, uh, uh, 10, no. Okay, and uh, because it was a bit costly, of course, we had to get more money from the ministry. Uh, it's every time boring, boring moment when you have to go there with your with the user of the building and applying and explaining why we don't have money enough for the process, et cetera, et cetera. I say every time situations like this, we, I, I, this is my advice, please try to avoid that. But time to time we have to be able also and uh, be proud, being able to, to earn more money. Okay, but uh, the user and also uh, the ministry like this, this, uh, this project uh, because uh, it uh, received a nickname, it's, it's, it's like a bird. I mean, the shape of this building is like, like a bit like a bird. You can recognize there is the neck of a bird and uh, the body of the, of the neck and one, no, the next one, please, back. The next one, next slide, please. Yes, here, yes, you can consider some kind of shape of a, of a bird. And uh, that was also uh, 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 a kind of uh, inspiration for the exhibitions telling uh, then a bit about the Finnish mythology, how we have uh, understood uh, uh, the meaning of uh, the forests in our history, etc., etc. But uh, here is a special special shape and uh, also this is in that sense the next one quite quite interesting thing that time to time we meet although this is our architect's intention uh, the the building begin to live its own it begins to live its own life in a way and this started to live birds life that was a nice story the next one please Yes, uh, inertia was a very important starting point and uh, just so-called uh, uh, zero energy building, uh, uh, that was one of our aims. And uh, we architects, of course, we can, uh, we can effect to this, but uh, of course, technically, we need also some technical uh, support like uh, geothermal uh, uh, heating, uh, cooling systems, etc. What we architects can, can do, the next one, uh, let's keep this for a while, is that we uh, should think uh, very, very carefully how to orientate the building. Actually, uh, this side, uh, it faces to the south mostly and also to the lake. It's, it's, it's taller, it's actually 20 meters high and having also balcons, et cetera, et cetera, we are getting sunshine from this side to the building. And uh, that is one aspect, one factor, so that we don't need so much electric lights. That was uh, calculated by our electric engineering teams and uh, many other specialists. And also at the same time, when we have uh, some, uh, some terraces, they cut the hottest, uh, uh, um, hottest, um, how to say, hottest sun, so that uh, both and we are getting light, but not too hot air or sunshine from this side. If you take the next slide, please, we can <coughs> we can see how different is than the northern part. So this uh, brown facade is only five meters high on this side of the building, having any windows, any openings and continuing, it is embedded also because 
the terrain uh, uh, is, is quite steep. This side of this building uh, is, uh, is embedded into the rock and uh, the f actually the uh, wooden uh, facade uh, and wooden wall structure continues until the basement. There is a kind of uh, uh, canopy not touching the wall and uh, so that uh, the wooden wall can continue until the basement. But just orientation, low part on the northern part and higher part on the southern part. Southern part with windows, wide openings, and northern part totally closed. This is also the northern part or northeast side uh, without windows, but having then the main entrance area. Uh, <coughs> wood actually gives the tone for everything, uh, for the architecture, but being the part of uh, the exhibitions. Some handmade sketches again here, and uh, then uh, uh, there is also one section, but I'm afraid that you can't consider this all. So, technically, it was based, structures were based on uh, CLT elements. It's uh, cross-laminated timber techniques. This is the word. This is quite well known in uh, Central Europe. And uh, this uh, product has uh, developed in, uh, in Austria, in Switzerland, and used since the 80s already in uh, school buildings, in, uh, in housing buildings, etc., etc. <laughs> and uh, all the wall structures, uh, roof, everything was based on using of these uh, prefabricated elements. We manage uh, the next one. Uh, we manage uh, also, uh, <coughs> yeah, on the background you can see uh, a row of, uh, of uh, wooden beams uh, or columns, of course. This is here in the middle. This is the central point of our exhibition. We manage both, and we manage both the building itself and we manage uh, the exhibition and uh, uh, writing, uh, writing together with our uh, users, our clients, manuscript for, uh, for that first and then managing uh, exhibition structures. The egg, which is its name here, is the central part of the main exhibition hall and uh, symbolic way because it is egg, there is now egg just uh, uh, resting on the floor inside our bird that was uh, the story and uh, the idea was to uh, equip this nice structure with some projectors and uh, bringing there a kind of uh, uh, short uh, summary of the exhibitions for the busy exhibition visitors. Uh, but uh, technically this was very, very interesting because uh, it was based on uh, some algorithmic calculations. At that time, this was not so well-known system, but nowadays there are courses in the universities, for instance, around algorithmic architecture, and you younger generation, you know, maybe this much more better than I, I do. But however, we very first time tested one of the very first test or mock-ups in Finland to try to utilize this technique. So, prefabricated wooden staves, uh, digital uh, program first, and then uh, transportation or transmitting to uh, the, uh, the manufacturer, and um, mechanically with the machines when uh, uh, formulated uh, all of those staves. Uh, the idea was that we don't use uh, nails or screws, any glue as well, so uh, all the staves, they have an individual shape. Uh, that means that there are, I can't remember anymore how many, but 700 uh, individual joints as well. So, and uh, everything has happened totally smoothly. So this is maybe one model how we could build in the future. Wooden material is not needed only. It's, it works also when we are talk, talking about steel, etc. But of course, in this case, 
wooden material was natural choice, but then also it is easy to, <coughs> easy to manufacture because wood is, is soft material, et, et, et cetera. <coughs> so very, uh, very, uh, very uh, uh, much result of uh, digitalization and digital techniques and uh, and uh, also the structural, uh, structural idea so that we uh, can uh, uh, put together all of those uh, wooden pieces without glue, that was uh, important detail. The space was so beautiful finally that uh, our client uh, uh, said uh, it's, it's no, no sense to equip this nice structure with some projectors and we found an artist who made his work then uh, swans are playing Chuck and uh, it's it's long uh, long long and complicated story but uh, yeah they have uh, there are some some uh, symbols of DNA etc and they are playing with DNA those 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 birds okay <coughs> no however that was uh, that was uh, not very first uh, big scale Finland where uh, wooden elements were used and nowadays there are many other examples in, in Finland made by many other architects uh, of, of wooden buildings. Elias Saarinen is one of our most important architects uh, influence it. Uh, his influence uh, is, uh, can, can be found from the beginning of uh, the last century. He's a very simple advice that uh, is uh, I think uh, we Finnish we finish architects we all notice always look at the next scale and that is also very very uh, good advice so how uh, uh, well this uh, table uh, fits into its, uh, its space and uh, finally how well uh, the building fits into its space how well it is in, uh, in scale in a harmony with its surrounds <coughs> and the scale is also something what we have to, I will pick up some uh, two, three international examples uh, what we have, uh, what we have uh, done during the last couple of years uh, where let's say the scale uh, has a special meaning and uh, actually uh, the most important and the leading uh, criteria to choose different architectural ideas and methods. So Renaissance Museum in Oman, uh, so uh, its task is uh, to, uh, let's say, honor the memory of the Sultanate and his achievements uh, since, 17, since 1970 till today. And uh, several uh, international uh, teams were invited from Finland, beside, uh, from uh, Europe, beside us, uh, near Dorsoveano, from Spain, etc. This explains also how uh, if we have uh, the site with uh, nothing, this was the, uh, the environment with uh, nothing, no mountains, no lakes, no trees, no other buildings. It was like, uh, like a moon skin, like, uh, like a uh, landscape in the moon. And how to approach what to do here when you have nothing, where do you start? My very first idea was that because I made the site visit, of course, we made the site visit. It's important every time to, take the, to make the site visit to see the site and its feeling. I recognized that totally nothing on the site, getting any inspiration or nothing. I learned that Oman is known of its history of carpets, very fine carpets. And this was one starting point. Later on, I learned after the competition, just reading Leafing uh, One Pook, I found this uh, uh, photograph of, uh, uh, of an uh, old historical minaret from, uh, from, from Iraq. Iraq's culture history is different than Omas, but however, this was, uh, it was nice to compare how our thoughts time to time uh, have uh, its own own route we are following the history or we have something here in our mind we are following not knowing 
maybe about that, but just uh, coming into the same result uh, in, in the both, both cases, there are so many similarities with, with this architectural idea. And of course also, I think uh, very often when we think uh, 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 architects and architecture, uh, which is uh, in a way transported from one side to the another one, I'm talking about uh, uh, architecture on international level. There are number and number more and more architectural offices uh, working abroad, not knowing the local history, not knowing uh, uh, the background of the climate, nothing actually. However, we should find proper solution and uh, a kind of connection, especially with the history of the site, with the history of the country. We didn't know, but this was our uh, interpretation of, uh, uh, of Islamic architecture. We transported them here. Not very authentic way to make architecture, but that was the only one. Okay, we were uh, invited also uh, two years ago uh, 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 the competition, the name is the Museum for the Defense and Siege of Leningrad uh, in, in St. Petersburg. And uh, the task was to create a certain type of memorial and uh, the museum for the victims of the war in, uh, in uh, Russia, especially in, in Leningrad. We all know the history of the uh, tragedy of uh, those uh, 900 days. And uh, here, scale is essential issue in this architecture, because you know, St. Peter's book is listed city today. I mean, uh, protected city because of its history, its silhouette, uh, skyline, etc. How to make, in a way, a kind of memorial or monument, maybe, without to disturb the old historical city and uh, its skyline. But at the same time, to get a maximum effect with your, your component or with your, your memorial. And this is now from, from NEVA. This was our idea. Uh, a, a spiral, it, was, it had the name uh, the Treat of Life, the Treat of Life very symbolic name for, for the process. The life was died, the people were died, but the new life is growing up. This is the symbolic message of, uh, of this, this building. And actually, the program of the museum was, was huge in terms of the environment and these uh, uh, existing uh, circumstances. Also here, we decided to hide the learning center, the museum itself, uh, creating uh, uh, an artisanal hill that was not existing there, but, uh, but we built it and, we, and uh, we hide it, then the building must underneath of this hill. And only this spiral, this the thread of the life <coughs> is then uh, on that and, and, and visible. We organized also one empty, uh, empty uh, yard that is, let's say, uh, underlining the effect of silent. That was also one of our intentions, how to create a silent space and wide enough without any additional components because we need also silent in visual meaning, but we need also silence in, uh, in physical meaning. And the yard is now the space of, of silent. Yeah, he is uh, Neva River and uh, at the corner of uh, the southern part of uh, St. Petersburg. Description of, uh, of some plants, the interior, and finally, the spiral, which is now here, the people can enter, uh, route their visit, uh, just climbing up, up onto the top of the spiral and uh, finally 
having a visual contact with the existing, uh, with the St. Peter's book of our time. So, small spiral, but maximum effect in, uh, in its, on its site here. In the United Kingdom, uh, yes, uh, one of uh, the former Prime Minister, Mr. Cameron, decided to uh, start the process to find uh, uh, the new museum, actually learning center, uh, referring to the events of Holocaust and uh, just telling uh, to the British people and especially to the British young people what means Holocaust because according to him this word is totally unknown by, by, by the British of our time. That was the background and uh, the site was no less than the park next to the Parliament House. We all know that this Parliament House is uh, one of the most uh, often seen Parliament House in the world. And uh, the area <coughs> and our design is, uh, is, is visible also here already. Can we take the next slide, this one here? Also here, our learning center is uh, underneath of, uh, of this, this uh, nice park, under, underneath of this grass. And uh, only the part of memorial is then visible here. We work together with uh, Israeli artist Dani Karavan. And Dani Karavan has worked uh, with many other Holocaust memorials. And uh, together we, we taught them uh, the image and what would be uh, the message of our, our memorial. And uh, here also the scale is important because uh, although Parliament House is absolutely the prominent building, the highlight of the city shape, cityscape, <coughs> but at the same time our Memorial should be as effective as possible. And now here in this handmade sketch, you can consider roughly the idea of our design, the learning center underneath, and then those two wings, then penetrating from uh, the ground floor level and being finally visible uh, phenomena there on the on the park area. The next, next one here. <coughs> the content and the idea of this memorial was very, very simple because uh, Holocaust and United Kingdom, what that means, that means transportations of young kids from Europe, from the continent to United King Kingdom. It's a bit uh, controversial uh, lecture or part of the history of Holocaust, but however, United Kingdom was a uh, safe haven in a way uh, for those kids who arrived and by trains, by boat, by ferries, United Kingdom. Half of, but not all, some of those young kids, they started and they were transported from Europe, from, from the continent to the concentrate camps. And that's why we had two wings. One wing that leads to United Kingdom, to, you know, to Great Britain, and another one leading then to the concentrate camps. And here on the uh, left hand side, right, there is now the interior of this wind, rusty materials again rail track, some voices, and a bit similar, similar but more comfortable wing, another one that is leading them to United Kingdom. That was the story of our, our, uh, our work. <coughs> and in between those arcs, two wings, there is also a water mirror and uh, 
stainless steel facades without uh, any treatment, uh, just uh, giving a kind of mirror, mirror effect. This space is, is visible to people who are using the park. Of course, the idea was that they can walk every day through those arcs, choosing either racks to unite the kingdom or to the concentrate camp. Okay, the next one, please. And uh, the next one. And only two uh, renderings, visualizations from, uh, uh, from uh, the learning center. The materiality here is, of course, a uh, crucial, crucial issue. So, rusted steel only. Not cordon steel, but rusted steel. Our idea was to utilize also uh, a bit recycled way old ferries, old chips uh, found in uh, United Kingdom. And uh, that's why to bring uh, the sense of the history also being the part of, uh, of our story. All the ceilings, uh, all the walls more or less were, were, were uh, uh, clad by this, this material here. Light, of course, natural light is important also here, although we are uh, underground and we are talking about underground museum or learning center and just how to organize a clear route if we are talking about learning centers, museums, how to organize very, very clear route for, for the, the, the visitors. So what I wish to say is that every every era, every time has uh, its own important uh, 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 position in the, in, in the history and uh, we have to consider all the historical periods as equal as possible. So although times when the architecture does not bloom not so well, we have to understand the meaning of our environment. And uh, as older I become, I would like to say that uh, I, I honor all, all, more or less all the older buildings, although time to time they maybe seem uh, to be a bit ugly, but, uh, but, but it's part of our history because architecture is uh, the mirror, very much the mirror of, uh, of time. Today I don't have, a, I have a still a few minutes, five, six, seven minutes time. So uh, uh, I ask your patience a bit more, please, because I will, tell about this project and then uh, some words about our Jewish Museum in, uh, in Warsaw in, uh, uh, in uh, um, Poland. So uh, today we are working with uh, the project which name is the Lost Tetl in Sedua. It's very, very small village in Lithuania. You know, maybe some of you know what means uh, uh, the word Stetl. Stetl is uh, uh, the small village, small town. Uh, before the Second World War, where uh, with uh, uh, Jewish majority, that means, and now the Lost Tetel des describes how 600 people were killed during one night in this village. Actually, the whole village was died. The village is still existing. There are houses, and it is living, but its cultural life, its, its background, its history was cut totally. And now the idea is that this new museum would honor the memory of these times, the times when Jewish life uh, uh, felt well in the village and uh, the city was vital from many points of view. Uh, yes, there is one and the next one, please. There is a uh, Jewish uh, cemetery next to uh, our building and this cemetery was uh, investigated a couple of years ago and uh, because it has not been in use after uh, uh, 1941 when this uh, sad, uh, tragic event has happened. And the next phase of this process is now to make, make, make the museum and typically you can estimate according to this uh, uh, map, can you take this one, uh, it does not describe, not, not very clearly the environment, but you can 
Uh, you can image, you can uh, understand that the scale of the village is very, very small and uh, based on uh, uh, one family houses or uh, two story, two floor height uh, buildings, uh, buildings only. Here, once again, that learn to observe your daily surroundings and their ingrained values. Here I can show this uh, quite modest way. There are farmer houses also, and uh, the, the, the whole environment is based on uh, simple cellar roof buildings, built environment. My very first sketch after my very first site visit, I normally I try to draw uh, my first impressions, putting them into the paper as soon as possible. I had done my very first, uh, first visit. Uh, it's a good method to put, uh, save your first sketch, and after two years working, to compare a bit where you are now, today, and what was your first idea. Time to time, the first idea meets the current situation 100% sometimes not. Now here may be uh, 50, 60 percent because uh, the very first idea was to maybe to use also uh, some wooden materials, uh, some uh, vernacular materials more, but uh, the final uh, result is a bit different in that sense. And uh, I, will, I will show you some, some uh, photos of, uh, of that. Um, in uh, the architectural language, we have uh, the word concept. So we are talking that about concept and conceptual phase to ask the Finnish architects the concept and the design very often is the same. I can't consider conceptual phase, I can't consider design phase, it's the same. We have to consider while working with the idea of the project we should understand already and know our intentions, what kind of materials, what kind of details we should use. And this is important, a kind of, a kind of dialogue between uh, the thoughts of uh, design level solutions and conceptual level solutions. Both and are walking uh, uh, side by side by side. But however, here is now uh, this uh, colorful uh, uh, diagram uh, telling about the idea to bring a new seduva next to the cemetery area and to use only very, very simple cellar roof buildings. So uh, there is now new seduva, the village. Totally different composition what I have presented you uh, in uh, two uh, earlier examples. The site, the context, the history, climate, these are uh, uh, the, the things we have to consider and trying to create every time new, new concept, new idea, new massing. Testing by, by some models, just getting some other next uh, inspirations uh, to understand the scale, real scale of the buildings. Model is quite interesting because it's touchable. You can turn, you can keep it in your hands, the model physical model is every time, of course, much more a uh, concrete way to understand design than only visualizations, and uh, especially colorful visualizations. Okay, here is then the next, is, uh, you can, we can scroll, it's every, every small building with maybe uh, from 100 square meters to 200 square meters, every, every pingel has its own content telling uh, uh, different events of Jewish life, uh, homes, uh, uh, common days uh, of uh, their life in general, and that is the idea that there, there are actually now seven, seven galleries telling, uh, telling the history. Light makes matter and structure readable and space understandable. We can't recognize architecture without light. We don't see light, but light makes matter visible. Very simple, obvious thing maybe, but however. Interiors are like this. Lower level will be for the exhibitions. The upper part will be empty and bringing air and light. 
That is the, the idea of those saddle roofs. And the next one, there are several, not very good looking in that sense, because the next one. And uh, also what has been, I have to come uh, to one detail because uh, yeah, it, uh, this refers to the operation abroad. We spoke today or yesterday maybe how wrongly and wrong way we often we see uh, and we understand the word context. It's not only the physical issue, so to understand the site and its, its uh, existing uh, buildings or, uh, or terrains or, or trees, whatever. But context means also that you understand uh, local circumstances and possibilities how to build. Because we know we have seen buildings after buildings with unproper details, for instance. The concept is, or idea is nice, but realization bad. And it, it, it links with the fact that we normally, it's clear, we don't know what is possible in Lithuania, what is possible in Switzerland is not possible in Lithuania. What is possible in Finland is not possible in Kazakhstan. But what is possible here in Kazakhstan is maybe possible in Italy. So we have to understand both sides of this coin. So it's, it's not possible to transport architecture and uh, bringing uh, your drawings to those country, to, to the another country and saying, please gentlemen or ladies, this is your building, please build it. You have to be really well aware for technical opportunities, technical possibilities, materiality. Uh, is it possible to get, for instance, hand, uh, uh, handmade work, uh, handicraft, handicraft work, et cetera, et cetera. And here, in the case when we have uh, the building of silent, really the building of silent and light is extremely important to manage all the technical equipments away not being the part of the architecture and how to manage this in this case we manage this with the support of uh, subconsults subcontractors from uh, switzerland from italy etc so we had to take some knowledge some uh, some, uh, some other opportunities which are not able to get directly from Lithuania. But of course, Lithuanian workers, they will have uh, the major role in the construction process. Construction works have started already. And finally, the end of the exhibition on the right-hand side is the exhibition gallery without nothing. There is nothing. It's only an arrow gallery and actually narrow corridor with uh, width uh, of 1.6 meters, no more, something like that. And it ends to the, few, to the cemetery area and to the fine landscape. Then you turn around the corner and go back into the lobby. This is the story of, uh, of this building. Yes, the shape, the final one is like what I skissed and sketched it in my first, uh, first uh, during my first visit, but I have turned uh, the architecture in a, in a way uh, onto the another direction a bit. Instead, wood or uh, uh, wooden uh, uh, shingles, that was the very first idea. We will use metal shingles, just bringing very abstract silhouette, very abstract character for this coming building. This is the description. Uh, it's an illusion, imagination of a house, not realistic description of house. And we are just now, we are working with uh, the Swiss company testing different uh, ways to uh, to get such an illusion we have described in this, these visualizations. It's now... Uh, three minutes. Okay, three minutes. Okay. 
Yeah, three minutes we agreed, okay. Okay, then we, has, we have to move on a bit faster. So timeless, time and timelessness, yes. <coughs> so it's also a kind of uh, uh, an umbrella in my work, uh, how, to, how to avoid uh, some uh, trends in architecture probably impossible intention or aim, I think. I have tried to do my best to do it, to create a building without that you can recognize that building is completed 2010. We know that there are some friends, there are uh, glass printing buildings and uh, many other smaller, bigger motives used in uh, the contemporary architectural buildings today. I don't like this. We should uh, find, let's say, more, uh, more permanent solutions and a bit uh, solutions with, with, without, without time run in a way. And our, our museum in Poland, I opened uh, and show you some slides of that uh, building. Uh, how. Uh, I can't remember anymore where I have taken this photo on the left-hand side, but this uh, I found it uh, uh, from my camera. And uh, on the right-hand side, there is uh, the lobby area and uh, the main entrance route, in a way, to the exhibition of uh, the Museum of the History of Polish Jews. And uh, there is glass baluster. Okay, let's accept that. There are some loudspeakers uh, do, uh, uh, the uh, 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 immersing exits, immersing exits, but uh, otherwise, let's say on the left hand side, the intention and the solution, then on the right hand side. That was, uh, that was uh, a kind of uh, key issue now when I saw, uh, see, uh, I will show you some, uh, some slides of, of this museum. And uh, actually, this uh, uh, building explains uh, why we have been invited to, uh, to many uh, competitions uh, of museums, of especially of Holocaust or war, or the Second World War, uh, because uh, yeah, we happened to win this competition in 2005. And uh, yes, we were an unknown name, unknown team, totally at that time, but we succeed to apply and to prepare a good application. And uh, the jury was uh, curious of, uh, of the works we have prepared beforehand, for instance, uh, the Finnish Forest Museum and the Finnish Folk Art Center, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, and we know the history of uh, Warsaw. Also in Warsaw, it was the city was destroyed totally during the Second World War, and the site actually was, after the war, like uh, uh, in, this, in the photo uh, on the right-hand side down, and uh, our museum is not far away from, from, from this site. Actually, uh, actually this uh, uh, Catholic church was one and only it's a white building on the area, not so white fully, but its frame was so white. And uh, we know also, uh, yeah, history, <coughs> from the history that uh, uh, Warsaw was uh, rebuilt again after the war according to the original drawings, uh, according uh, to uh, the old uh, uh, photograph material, etc. And the site itself was uh, the central, uh, central point of uh, Warsaw Ghetto and uh, bringing today uh, the name of uh, Willy Brandt, uh, Willy Brandt Park, Willy Brandt, yes, Willy Brandt Park is, uh, is the name of, uh, of this site, Murano area. This is the site from where the people were transported to Auschwitz, to the dead camps. So in that sense, to me and to our team, I, I, I think and I feel still that this is uh, rather the cemetery area than an open park area. It's, it's, it, was, it has been an open park area and that we have to honor the memory of those victims absolutely also choosing architectural lines such a way that 
this is not a building. We have to have big scale memorial. There are some handmade sketches here. First, telling the simple idea of triangle, uh, sorry, of, uh, of square. And then free uh, running line inside the building, just creating the lobby area. Here is the section of the building again. We have the exhibition part in the basement being there as a black box in a way. And what we can see while walking there around the building, uh, there are some other activities and facilities, auditoriums, uh, cafeterias, uh, conference rooms, uh, uh, temporary exhibition areas, etc. Very and very brief uh, uh, description of our concept here of the idea. And that was small story also because we Finns normally we honor the, in the competition competitions very much program. So to, to, to follow exactly the program and the wish of, uh, of the client. That is, that is one, one thing. And just to think uh, uh, the building from uh, the point of view of operation, how it works really, what is how to organize the whole program. And uh, there were very uh, uh, strict rules, for instance, uh, uh, of the height of the building. So what is the maximum height? What is the maximum footprint of the building? Because it is a valuable uh, park area for the citizens living uh, on surroundings. And we found quite clever, quite smart solution. But uh, one morning when I came to to our office, I had to say to me that, uh, yes, we have very well working museum with our architecture because we had only one box with rectangular corners. But then, yeah, that was nice moment, very, very short moment, 10 seconds moment. Why not to make and roll one curved line inside the building? Okay, and then after that, the, uh, the architecture was existing and this drawing describes this, this idea. And this is the final one. This is uh, uh, the digital description of uh, the internal walls of the lobby, uh, which are, I mean, the wall systems are part of the structural system of the building. They are bearing component uh, so that uh, uh, the slabs meeting this curved wall, they are uh, yeah, they, uh, they, they, they are supported by this, this wall, actually. So this wall does not, not hang from the slabs as very, very often if you see uh, spaces like, like this. And here is now the final, final lobby area dominated by, by, by short concrete. It's, it's, it's the limestone color. We used a special uh, mixture of, uh, of concrete inside this wall, there is the system of uh, metal tubes, metal structures. And also that design was based together with the structural team was based on uh, some, some, uh, uh, some uh, kind of algorithmic approach. And the same assistant, Marcus, Mr. Marcus Vikari, who was my collaborator with the Haldia with the Finnish Nature Center, when we created YEC, we utilized the same techniques in this building too, just uh, making and managing uh, all, uh, not all the statical calculations, but uh, just creating the program so that our engineering team was able to use and to utilize then this, this program. Okay, now some sketches I run very, very quickly. This uh, on the right hand side, the competition kits, the final competition phase. Facades, which were based on glass and copper, and the scale again, you see here only the shape of the building, the monument uh, of the heroes uh, uh, of uh, uh, Warsaw Uprising. On the left hand side, I was one of the starting points uh, of our design. I recognize very, very seriously its presence, although it's, uh, maybe it's uh, artist, 
uh, artistic uh, value is not so high, but uh, its historical meaning is absolutely very much, very much important. The square in the front of our new museum is very busy park or uh, a kind of uh, open space today and uh, attracting people uh, for different events and several events have been held also on, on, on this yard area. Scale is important as uh, closer you walk to the wall, you can see different uh, smaller and smaller details and such three geometry of the facades here. Night time is different what to consider very carefully. Our, our idea at the beginning was to utilize also lights in the facades, but uh, I like to keep them a bit more mute because we, this is not a commercial center with lights. This is uh, the monument honoring the memory of the victims of Holocaust in Poland. And here we run very, very quickly this so that you can, yes, inspirations are every time important in architecture. In this special case, 2005, 2006, I had to present uh, and to promote our project for, for the donors in the US, for instance, in United Kingdom, et cetera. And uh, of course, the very first uh, question by, by the people was very, very often, so Mr. Malamaki, how did you find your inspiration? What is the idea of your design? How did you find this? Yeah, then we are, have to be able to explain. And uh, yes, here is uh, a famous cave uh, uh, of Qumran's, uh, cave of Qumran scrolls that is important uh, in the history. And uh, then model of our work the name of our project was Yam Suf. That, is, uh, that means uh, Hebrean word or name. Yam Suf means in English clumsy uh, interpretation is like that uh, uh, splitting of the Red Sea. Okay, when Moses, uh, let's say, with the lead of uh, Moses, uh, they escaped from Egypt. But of course, afterwards, I have recognized how many uh, interpretation the people have done how to explain the presence and the feeling uh, and how emotionally to feel this uh, uh, the lobby area where you meet very first one when you, you, you come to this, this nice building. There are different slides showing only the architectural, you can run them all because we are now finishing here. There are more neutral areas. The lobby is the most important, but also some, uh, some uh, uh, facilities for different events. Uh, there is uh, also a big auditorium uh, uh, with uh, copper material and materiality also in this case is very important. Finally, it is great that there are still countries and there are still possibilities that you can create, for instance, or, or design individual lamps for, for the building. And we actually designed a number of lamps, maybe masterpieces in the field of design, maybe not, I, 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 I say. But these are designed myself and these have been designed for the museum only. These are individual in that sense. Yeah, that was uh, the only... Uh, I, we had really great client. Our client actually was the ministry, the government, and the city of Warsaw, plus then the user of the, the, the museum itself, plus, of course, then uh, private sponsors. We had really good cooperation, really good cooperation throughout the project. Only, uh, let's say, uh, small scale uh, tension we met was uh, the lamp. Uh, in the middle because uh, it was uh, the lamp, or this is the mold for the lamp actually here, uh, for the restaurant, but not accepted because it reminds too much uh, dead chicken and that was something that you can, you can see it there, but it's a bit, a bit different today. Okay, and renderings of them, and here is our, let's say, uh, one of the chicken now. Details and details, the smallest scale is every time handmade work 
every time when it is possible, please use it. These opportunities we have time to time still. Okay, thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, your patience for your coming. And uh, I, yeah, thank you, and I apologize.